So at this point, the um, the big magic is coming from these three lines at the top in the head section, where we've connected to the jQuery script, the jQuery mobile script, and the jQuery mobile CSS. So the design and the colors and so forth, a lot of that comes from the CSS file and then the, the, the ability for us to add a data role to things that comes from uh, the JavaScript files, the jQuery files. So again, if we did not have these links to these files up here, data role would, would be ignored. The web browser would not know what to do with them, so it would look plain. Let's further explore what data role is. This is not a standard HTML or HTML5 uh, bit of code. It is only meaningful with jQuery and jQuery mobile, data role. And so I teased that there's also data role equals button, and that created a button that stretched across the screen. I'll get back to that in a moment, but we're going to see a lot of data role using jQuery mobile. And what that does is it, in a sense, upgrades various elements to behave in other ways besides their default behavior. So we've got section, which we've set to data role. So that means that's a different page of our app. We want to then go here to header. Header has the, the basic semantic meaning that it's header content. But visually, I want it to look like a header. So we'll go into header, and we'll add a data role there as well. And this will be a data role of header. Save and run that. See how that changes. You should see that it now looks perhaps a bit more like a header, simply with data role equals header. Look at that. The text was automatically centered, a little dividing line, etc. And why does that work? Because we've got jQuery mobile and jQuery uh, libraries that we're tapping into. Write or do more by writing less. We could have done this with plain old CSS, but that would be probably 40 lines of code. Not so many, but a lot of lines of code. And here with, you know, eight characters, it did it. Let's go to article section, data role equals content. So perhaps when the HTML5 standard was being developed, I would have voted for, if they had asked me, I would have voted for content tag, a tag called content slash content. But they decided on article. <coughs> That's HTML. But data role is not. It only makes sense with jQuery mobile. Now if you look at it, it didn't really ch seem to change, <coughs> but it did. My previous version, my current version, what's the difference? A little indenting? Yeah, it gave us a little bit of padding along the edges. It's not, it's not all the way bumped up to the edge. Um, that looks a little nicer there. <coughs> so that's visually something happens with a data role, and that's attached to a tag that has a meaning. This is a section. This is a header. This is a footer. We have a footer data role as well. Let's go to footer data dash role equals footer. So header, tag, and header data role, same thing. Easy to remember. Article is a data role of content. You'll just have to memorize that. And a page full of content is the data role page and the tag section. So what does footer look like? footer data role <laughs> looks kind of like a header perhaps the big the big reason perhaps because it's not at the foot I would expect the footer to be at the bottom of the document at the foot so we need one more thing to kind of uh, pin it down there we can add another attribute footer data role footer and then we're also going to add 
data dash position equals fixed. I'm adding that to the footer at the moment. Footer, data roll, footer, data position, fixed. And now that should show that it sort of affixed it down to the footer, like I'm expecting a footer to be at. Again, if yours isn't quite working, most likely is be it's because you've either misspelled data role, sometimes people write date role, and data or data role, and then also people sometimes misspell that, that uh, those links at the top that I sadistically made you write. You could have made a mistake there. Ideally, we would already have this link and just copy and paste, but we wrote it long form, and sometimes that can cause a misspelling. So great, that looks uh, a little bit more like, a, like an app or like a mobile-friendly website. There's a header at the top and a footer at the bottom, my content in the middle. I've got this page full of content, and I can go to page two. Oops. Looks the same. Why do you think? We never told page two to also behave like a screen of content. So, again, we're doing it the long way, but later on we'll have even more shortcuts. Yes, you'll have to, at the moment, for the moment, also add the data roles to the appropriate sections here. So try that on your own for a moment. Refer to what we already did, and then apply that to page two. So, header needs a data role of header. Article needs a data role of what? Content. Content. And footer needs a data role of what? Footer. And what extra thing? Position. Data position fixed. So that it gets tacked to the ground. To the, to the bottom. So if you go, if you then load that up, you will see page one, you go to page two, and then you got page two with your header, your content, and your footer. And I wanted to show you something here. I wrote a bunch of paragraphs. I'm going to scroll down. Scrolls down, nice. Are you noticing something, however? Well, we never made the button on page two. Something else? Yeah, at the top, page two scrolls away. I want that fixed also. That's what I see when I often look at an app. I've got a header at the top that stays there. My header is not. My header is floating away because I've got all of, the, all of this content. Yours, that you don't have a lot of content. You cannot scroll. I just put a bunch of enjoys here to show you that if I then scroll, it scrolls away. So the header could also have data position fixed. Let me show you that. Header, data roll header data dash position equals fixed. You don't really need it right now because you're not really scrolling, but I put in a bunch of paragraphs here. And as I scroll, I see my header scroll off. Here's the difference. With data position fixed, I go to page two, I scroll down, page two header stays on top, like a real app.
And yes, some of you picked up that the page 2 button doesn't look like a button because we have not added what to it? Data roll equals button. Go back to page 1, but it doesn't look like a button. So we'll add data roll equals button. So with data roll button, now it uh, looks like an actual button. Question? When you have a, a large operation like a CNN or a, you know, like a, an Amazon, how do they control these kinds of uh, things? Do they have like a standards or a book or, or how do they control them? Most likely um, they are using something proprietary that they invented themselves or they could be using off-the-shelf technology that is well documented and then they implement an in-house sort of standard mm -hmm. and what we're looking at here is a standard that anyone that is using jQuery mobile this will work so these large companies you don't quite know how they did it unless you you know you you research them or, or ask them and sometimes it would be proprietary they don't want to give this away to their competitors but um, you can go to certain tech websites and and in there they might tell you because this is a very techy subject so I've got go to page two and then Go back to page one. So as we go on, we're going to see that data roll is very important. We're going to use it for a variety of, of aspects. Um, these, these attributes, data rolls. Later on, we could do, um, we can make a pop-up. Like uh, you click something and then a little pop-up window happens. We can also, um, we'll be talking about data role, we've got data position, we've got other ones. There is, of course, a, a resource that I will show you soon about, well, okay, this, this works, what other options do I have? What other data roles or data whatevers that I don't know? What, what else is there? If you do a little research, you might find it, but we'll look at it together soon. Right now we're just doing things little by little. Um, I want to do a couple of other things first. Um, you know, just a, a few hours ago, this was a very basic project. You know, if I take it back here, that's what we started off with. And that's basically where we, our content is still the same, but now by adding some of these libraries, suddenly we've upgraded it to something much, much higher. So this is a, uh, a web project, and you can see that it's taking on some semblance of a mobile app. Um, this is why we will be able to take this and, uh, and then in month two be able to upgrade this to an, an app, a, an Android app, an iPhone app, etc. Now, right now, because, it because it's still a web page, uh, it has some behaviors of a web page. Do you ever browse on your phone or tablet? Do you ever browse on your phone? You go to a website, you load up the website, and the text is really small. And you have to zoom in. And then some websites, you load them and they fit perfectly on screen. No zooming in and zooming out. Right now, this web page might display everything very small. So what we're going to do is write one line of code for it to be even more mobile friendly so that it's zoomed in to fill the whole screen and to also disable the ability for people to zoom in and out. And you say, well, why would we take that ability away? Are you able to zoom in and out on Facebook? Are you able to zoom in and out on the, fa on the Snapchat app? You're not able to zoom in and out in any app. It fits perfectly on your screen. So we're going to write one line of code that will emulate that. Because right now, if we were to load this, on our device, we would be able to zoom in and out and break the illusion of a, of a real app. That's going to be another tag up in the, in the head section. 
Let's go back to the top head. We'll add this right after title. And the reason for that is we'll see as we go on. It does matter actually the order that you put these things in sometimes because if we try to load jQuery mobile first without loading jQuery things might not work. jQuery is built on top of jQuery mobile is built on top of jQuery so if we flip those two around the project might not work. So early on what I want to say here is to make this project behave more like a native app by locking some of its zoom features. So this is going to be a meta tag. Let's write meta. This has a few attributes. This one is name equals. This is a meta tag. Uh, the name of it is viewport. Viewport is the fancy name for the main part of the web browser window. So what we're seeing here, this is, this is the viewport. The stuff outside of the tabs and the address bar and the, and the browser status bar, this is the viewport. Here, then, is a smaller viewport that I've shrunk it over. And here is an even smaller viewport. Right? Viewport. So we're saying, let's do something with the viewport. Let's set some properties of the viewport. When this page loads up in a web browser, or eventually in a mobile device screen. This is a viewport also. <coughs> Specifically what we're saying is content equals... Meta tags are old. They've been around for a long time in HTML, but we are using them in the latest ways to be mobile friendly. Viewport, for example, is one, and then inside of content we're going to set various other sort of sub-parameters. Um, uh, we're going to say initial dash scale equals one. So this basically means when you first load this project, make its zoom level 100%. The computer thinks between zero and one. You know, 0 0.2 is 20%. 0 0.75 is. 75%, 1.0 is 100%. So we're saying here, make the zoom 100%. So that means it'll, it'll zoom you in already. You won't have to zoom in. Comma. There's a comma and then a space. I also want to say user-scalable equals no. Don't let the user zoom in and out lock us in at a hundred percent view. So initial scale one, user scalable no. That disabled zooming in and zooming out like a real app. And then to further to question? And to further lock us into the size of whatever device, because I may be vertical, I may be horizontal, I want the project to expand automatically to fill the viewport, we'll say comma, width equals, remember we had 100%, 75%, we have a special one here, device dash width. Whatever the width of the device is, grow to it. Change its width to the to the size of the device, portrait or landscape, tablet or phone or smartwatch. If we save and run this, we won't really see too much different because we're running it in a web browser. But if we were running it in a mobile device, this would really, you know, elevate it even more to behave like a mobile, like a real native app. An app made in the traditional way of Java. Or if we were making an iPhone app in Objective-C, or Swift, or if we were over on Windows and using C Sharp. Those apps fit to those devices because it's got various parameters, properties, attributes that let it do that, and here we can do those things via HTML. 
So again, I don't think there'll be a real difference here. Yeah, so you'll get the better result in the in the web browser, but you can see you can see aspects of it. So if you think about it, if you started with zero knowledge on day one last time, look at how far we are now. It's still a lot of what we did on day one. The big secret is the jQuery mobile stuff, the framework. Let's do one more jQuery mobile thing, and then we'll, we'll look at uh, some documentation, and then we'll wrap up. We'll have some lab time. Let's go to... line 26 which is my my link to go to page 2 and I've got uh, the attribute href where are we going the attribute data role make it a button let's add another attribute this is another jQuery mobile attribute let's say data dash icon equals jQuery mobile has about 40 icons built in and we can also make our own icons but let's um, Let's use the icon, and of course I'll show you the list of all possible icons soon. Let's use the icon gear, G-E-A-R, gear. Save and run it, and then you get a little gear icon built in for you that automatically grows and shrinks to the size of the device. Data-icon equals gear. Look at that, a little gear icon data dash icon equals gear again there's 40 of them I'll show you the list of them but try this other one try uh, home data icon equals home you have a little built-in home icon to put your app together so that you have a home button home look at that this one user what do you think that will look like maybe a little person user look at that so how could you use that icon in your app you can have that icon for the person's personal profile I'm not an artist but I can do data icon equals user and I've got that icon or I can then focus on the, on the code Maybe I am an artist and I want to design my perfect icons in Illustrator. We can do that too, and we can see later we can have our own custom icon. Data dash icon my icon. And with some other code, have my icon that I designed in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. There's a bunch of them here. Camera. Get a camera. So some of the big ones, email, I mean mail, not email, mail, there you go, mail. There's some arrows too, I don't have them all memorized, but uh, we'll, look, we'll look them up in a moment. But again, this is all because of jQuery Mobile. These are built into basically the CSS file. This that we linked up here, jQuery Mobile CSS. Right. Where are these files actually saved? They're not saved anywhere in our project. They're up on the server. They're on the jQuery Mobile server. Right. It's just like maybe I'm not asking the question. Um, so all the jQuery Mobile server, do you have the this is your personal file, or is this someone else's file, or is this just an open source? It's basically the open source file. Everyone in the world might be connecting to this file. Okay. So it's not our personal file. Later on, we will download a copy for ourselves to run off of our device because maybe someone does not have internet access. 
So thinking forward, we develop our app, we're connected to jQuery mobile files, but whoops, the person doesn't have internet access, so suddenly your app is all in black and white and no icons. So we will download a personal copy later and put it in our project so that it doesn't rely on an internet connection. And we will actually see these icons. But that'll be when we download the, our own personal copy. And is there a page like we're picking buttons that we don't really know what they look like till they appear on the screen. Is there somewhere we can see what those buttons are? Like uh, yes, we're gonna pull up we're gonna pull up the official documentation soon, and in there we will see a list of all the icons and what they look like, and a bunch of other jQuery mobile features. So there's definitely documentation. So um, we still have a ways to go, of course. But we've gotten pretty far today. Let's take a let's do a little bit of reading. Uh, we're going to pull up an article here, so I'm going to go to the web browser and let's go let's go over to Wikipedia. Let's go to Wikipedia and let's search the article jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile on Wikipedia. <coughs> jQuery Mobile is a touch-optimized web framework, more specifically a JavaScript library, currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a wide variety of smartphones and tablet computers, made necessary by the growing but heterogeneous tablet and smartphone market. The jQuery mobile framework is compatible with other mobile app frameworks and platforms such as PhoneGap, Worklight, and more. So it's just a, a way to create an interface functionality of a mobile app. And you can read about it. The latest version is 1.4.5. According to this features, it just talks about it that it's HTML5 driven, Ajax powered, other stuff. Uh, an example here, basic example. Uh, what follows is a basic jQuery mobile project utilizing HTML5 semantic elements, etc., etc. A little bit of explanation, data role, we haven't looked at data theme yet. Data position, we haven't looked at data transition yet. Data icon. And if you look here, this is what we did today. Because guess what? I wrote that on Wikipedia. I am Wikipedia famous. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you look at the view history, you'll see my name. Um, but anyway, this project here that we've been working on, you can see that example there. And you're seeing the section in the data role and all of that, jQuery Mobile. And you can keep reading about it, themes. We haven't talked about themes. What if I want to change the colors of things? Right now it's boring. Gray. We can change themes. Because my company's branding is not gray and white, it's blue and pink. And I want my colors to look, my app to look like that. So there's a concept of theming that we'll talk about later. This works on pretty much every mobile device. Uh, so you'll be able to run it on Android and Blackberry and iOS and Windows and everything. Although this should be updated. It hasn't been updated and I'm not going to. It's way too much work. Uh, release history. It's been around since 2010, so it's been maturing for five years to get better and better every version. I've been following it for a while. When I teach these classes, I've been using it, and so I've been seeing it evolve. 145 is the latest one. At the bottom, under C also, that's also nice to look at to see alternatives, because jQuery Mobile is not the only framework that lets you make mobile app interfaces. As I've said, there's other ones. Here we see a list like Lungo.js and uh, Tizen and JQ Touch and so forth. There's, there's other ones. Which is better? Well, the one that creates your project. It doesn't matter which framework you use as long as you get the result you're looking for. But in this class I teach um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery Mobile, and then eventually Cordova 
also known as phone gap. And there's many other ways we can do everything I'm teaching here, but I focused on these technologies and they are the most popular ones at the moment. Perhaps something comes along and takes over and then I'll have to learn that and teach that. But at the moment, uh, jQuery, jQuery Mobile, uh, PhoneGap, that's a, that's a good way to create an app. So this is of course just a general article. Why don't we go straight to the horse's mouth? jQueryMobile.com. That's where we will get the latest news, the latest code, the documentation about every aspect of jQuery Mobile, the examples of all the icons and transitions and all of that good stuff. We'll take a quick look at it, and as the course goes on, we'll be referring to it often because that's the manual. Have you heard of the expression RTFM? If you have it, it means read the funky manual. So you'll be able to know everything about jQuery Mobile on this site. It's straight from the jQuery Mobile team. For example, go to jQueryMobile.com and go look at demos at the top here. Demos will show you a preview of every aspect of jQuery Mobile, how it how it looks, how it works, and, and what the code is. So if you look at demos, we're currently at version 145, so look at that one. And then if you scroll down on the bottom right CSS framework, icons. This will show you all our possible icons. alert. So if you want something, uh, a button for some sort of warning or maybe an icon in the middle of your text or something, you've got the alert icon. You've got action. Basically, the, the name that it's showing you here is what you would write in data icon. If I wanted a left pointing arrow, I would write data icon equals arrow dash L. Yeah, those are the keywords. Those are what you're writing for. Yeah, that's what you're writing to get the icon. Instead of mail, action, and that pulls up the action icon. What would that be useful for? Maybe like share? You've got your app and you want people to share your your app with their friends. You click that and then it pops up to share on Twitter, let's say. There's a little audio icon to change the volume in your app. There's a calendar icon. Various arrows, comments, a little cloud. An eye forbidden. A heart. An info button. A power button. So these common kinds of icons that we might need in an app. And then, of course, if we want to use our own icon, there's the documentation a little lower here. Custom icons. Icons are displayed as background image of the colon after pseudo element. Target the pseudo element to set a custom icon. What does that mean? View source, and it shows you here UI icon dash my icon. And more example. So if I want my own icon, I have to set some CSS, which we'll do later. Background dash image the address to my particular image, the CSS here, my icon. So we will be referring to J the jQuery Mobile website often as the semester goes on as necessary. We're going to wrap up our main lecture in just a moment. 
but we've gone from 0 to 60, haven't we? Based on what we've learned on day 1, we've added a couple new things, and now look where we're at. So uh, we will continue at this pace as the semester goes on. Remember to refer to the syllabus for the calendar of what we're, what we're uh, learning. So uh, I'm going to put my code in the network folder in just a moment, but any general questions on anything we've talked about today or any questions or comments or concerns or anything? Yes? Uh, when you uh, link to the script from the head tag, uh, mm -hmm. jQuery script, um, are you ever of a mind to have the, the versions are always being updated? Mm -hmm. Are you ever of a mind, and how would you just always perpetually link to the most current version? Well, my answer to that would be I would not be linking to their server. Um, I would download a copy of those files into my project folder and keep them there um, because they'll be updating. I don't think that the server structure will change, but if I'm relying on a resource that's out in the cloud and that changes or there's no internet connection, that's bad. So I'm going to rely on a copy in my own folder. Now about the version numbers and so forth, what I would say is um, I would not be updating to the newest versions as soon as they come out. I would need to read, well, what's the difference? Let me read the change log. What has been added? What has been removed? Some things have been removed throughout the evolution of jQuery Mobile. So if I just blindly updated to version 1.4.6 and suddenly some of the, this data role changed, or was removed, now my app is broken and people are going to give me one star on the App Store. So that's kind of a bigger answer. I would have to download the latest version, test with my new version of the code, make a new app, beta test it, and then decide, okay, I'm going to update to version 4.6, which requires, of course, that time and effort and work. Does that uh, answer your question? Absolutely. Yeah, I personally, for myself, if I'm working on a project and I and I'm I'm up and I'm looking at the sites and I know that new stuff has been updated, I look into it and I read it, but I don't update my my app in progress. I don't know what's going to change or break. I'm going to finish my project with the older code, upload it and publish it, and then start to learn about the new code, and then after that decide when to update version two. Any other general questions or comments from anything today? All right, so I'm going to put my work in the, in the network folder. I'm going to upload the lectures. Remember, send me, a uh, send me a link to get the videos, and we'll do it again next time.